everybody and welcome back to my channel and also welcome back to part three of my dart frog journey. In today's video I am going to be showing you how I created this absolutely beautiful custom DIY background for my pet dart frogs. So while the background that I'm showing you in this video today is going to be for my dart frogs, you can make custom backgrounds for all sorts of different types of pets. So pretty much everything I'm showing you in this video today could also be applied to, you know, other species of reptile and amphibians. It's not just exclusive to dart frogs. I think that making a custom background for your enclosure is a really fun way to just turn setting up an enclosure into a really fun project. And not only is it really fun for you, but I think that custom backgrounds can be really beneficial and enriching for animals. So today, in this video, I'm going to show you how I create this background from start to finish. And I'm going to be showing it to you in a way that is very easy for you to follow along as well. So then, if you're interested in building a custom background for your enclosure, hopefully you can learn something from this video. As you all know by now, Exoterra is very generously sponsoring this video series. They also supplied me with the tank that you're going to see featured in today's video. Exoterra recently came out with a new product line called Frogs & Co. This here is their new dart frog tank which I'm really excited to use. I already have their tree frog tank and I really love it. These enclosures have some really neat features compared to the standard Exoterra enclosures. They have a single door for an unobstructed view into the tank, they come with a lid that's designed to help retain humidity, and my absolute favorite feature is the drain on the bottom. This makes it super easy to either empty your drainage layer or empty water from your pallet after watching this video, make sure you check out the Frogs & Co website to learn more about it. The link will be in the description down below. Thank you so much to my friends at Exoterra for helping to make this series possible, and without further ado, let's get on with the video. To get started, we're of course going to need the enclosure that we're using. I'm going to be using this new Exoterra dart frog terrarium. It measures 18 inches wide, 18 inches deep, and 18 inches tall. So far, I've really enjoyed these new Exoterra enclosures. Before you do anything, you want to make sure your glass is clean. Now it's time to figure out how I want to scape this tank. I'm going to be foaming some wood pieces into the background, so I need to figure out how I want to place them. So after playing around with these wood pieces a little bit, this is what I came up with. I want these pieces of wood to look like the base of a tree. I want them to almost look like roots growing into the ground. And personally, I think that this does a good job at replicating that. With the wood pieces in place, it's time to start foaming. To do this, I'm going to be using some black pond foam. I'm going to start by foaming the wood pieces in place and letting those dry. This will just make it a lot easier for me to do the entire background without worrying about the wood pieces shifting. I decided that I didn't want to use a ton of foam. Sometimes when I'm doing a background, I'll foam onto the sides of the enclosure, but for this one, I'm only going to be foaming the back of it. Once you're done foaming, you want to leave it for around 24 hours to cure. I 
I ended up letting mine cure for a few days before I started carving. Carving your foam is really important as it helps to remove the shiny surface which silicone and dry lock don't bond to very well. It also helps to achieve a more natural look and allows you to carve different shapes and textures into the foam. There are many different methods you can use to do this. I used a sharp knife to do most of the carving. So I just finished carving the enclosure and this is what it looks like right now. So far I am really really happy with how it turned out. I think it looks so good and I'm just so excited to see how it looks when everything is finished. When I was trying to figure out how I wanted to escape this enclosure, I decided that I wanted to try and recreate the base of a tree, and I think that the scape does a pretty good job of that. I am quite happy with how it turned out. You know, especially imagine this when we get like the soil in there and everything. I really think that this will look like some tree roots growing into the ground. Once the foam has been carved, it's time to finish the background. There are many ways you can make a background, but for this enclosure, I'm going to be using the dry lock method. This is a really easy way to make a nice looking background. Before we actually start applying the dry lock, I'm going to apply some silicone to the outer edges of the background to help keep it in place. When the dry lock dries, it can shrink the foam a little bit, which causes it to pull away from the glass. The silicone will ensure that that doesn't happen. So this is what we are going to be using here. If you are making a dry lock background, make sure that you are using just the dry lock original. And now it does come in two colors. It comes in white and gray. Normally I would use gray, but they were all out of stock and only had the white ones. So I'm going to be using this, but that's all right because I do have concrete tints. So I'll be using that to change the color. After mixing the dry lock with the tints, I now have this darker gray color. Applying this is really simple. You just brush it on and allow it to dry in between coats. I did a total of two coats of this gray base color. To make the background look more realistic, I'm going to take some lighter dry lock and lightly brush over the background to add some highlights. After doing this once, I then did it again with an even lighter color. 
As you can see, these highlights make a huge difference in the appearance of the enclosure. So my goal for creating this background was not to have a super detailed background that would draw a lot of attention to it, but instead have a fairly simple background that still looks nice, but will help make the plants and the frogs stand out. When you're looking at this enclosure, I want most of the attention to be drawn to the plants and the animals and the scape. I don't really want the background to draw a lot of attention to it. So when I was making this, I decided that I just wanted to go with a simple dark background. I thought that the darker color would help make the green plants and the blue frogs really stand out. So this background here is not meant to be super detailed or anything because like I said, I don't want the attention drawn to the background. I really just want the background to add emphasis to everything else in the enclosure. And so far, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think that this background is going to do exactly what I want it to do, and I do think it is really going to make everything in the enclosure pop. Even though dry lock is waterproof, I decided to also go ahead and seal the background with a matte water-based polyurethane. So after all of that, here is what the background currently looks like. So this here is pretty much complete. The only other thing I wanna to do to this background is silicone some dried moss onto it. However, I'm not going to be doing that for a few days because the polyurethane I put on here does take three days to completely cure. So I wanna give it at least three days before I wash it all off and then go ahead and silicone the moss on. So you will see that in the next video. And speaking of my next video, my next video in this dart frog series is going to show me planting this enclosure. I am really excited to plant this enclosure. I picked out a lot of really cool plants that I think are going to look amazing in here, so I'm really excited for you all to see that. And there we have it. There is the background that I built for my dart frogs, as well as a video that showed you how I did it. I am super happy with how this background turned out. I think that it is going to look so good once I get the rest of the enclosure set up. I am truly so excited for that. So I hope that you guys are excited as well. And if you are someone who is looking to build your own background, maybe that's how you found this video. I really hope that you were able to learn something from this video and found it useful. And once again, a big thank you to Exoterra for sponsoring this video. Right behind me here is my tree frog enclosure that I set up a few months ago, and I have been loving it ever since, so I am really excited to get my dart frogs into their new enclosure and see how they do in it. If you want to learn more about these tanks and the other Frogs & Co. products, which I would recommend doing, be sure to visit the link that is in my description down below. With all that said, I am going to go ahead and wrap up this video now. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out and I'm getting so close to my goal of 100,000 subscribers so it would really mean the world if you helped me get there. Also be sure to check out all of my social media. All of that will be in the description down below but it is all just MSM99 and I would love to have you over there. Also don't forget that this video here is part of a six part series. If you haven't seen the first two parts already make sure you do that and I hope that you will stick around for the three more videos to come. With all that said I am going to go ahead and wrap up this video now so thank you all so much for watching I do really appreciate it and I will see you all in my next video